Uh, hello, Robert. Uh, thank you for joining Movie Junk today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And you? I'm I'm super excited to you know to have you on. I'm I'm doing well and uh, just honored that uh, you know you're able to make the time to uh, to meet with us today. Thank you. It's my honor. My my privilege. Awesome. And, to be here. Uh, Thank you, thank you so much, Robert. And I know you don't need a, a big introduction, but um, you know, for the fans that uh, that aren't familiar with you, we have Robert Miano, uh, who's most famously known, uh, you know, for some you know notable roles. Uh, selfishly, I'm a huge fan of uh, your role in Sunny Red, uh, in Donnie Brasco, and um, also uh, you know you were in the uh, the Fast and Furious movie as uh, we thought was Braga, um, you know, ended up being you know the the boss, and you know that story was was great, and that was the you know the the movie of Fast and the Furious that kind of kickstarted the franchise uh, back in again. So I was excited to see you in that. Um, but you have over, you know, roughly 60 years uh, plus, you know, of, uh, of acting experience. And you've also produced some projects as well. Um, yeah, sure. So I, I definitely want to get into, you know, some of the roles that, you know, I, I love you in. But before we do that, do you mind just kind of sharing, you know, kind of, um, you know, what inspired you to kind of get into acting and, you know, kind of what got you kickstarted in the business? Well, two things come to mind. One is uh, Hopalong Cassidy, and the uh, you probably don't know who he is. Hopalong Cassidy was a cowboy in the uh, in the early fifties, or actually maybe it was the late forties. And uh, and the other um, influence, consciously or unconsciously, was uh, Pacino. Nice. I, I grew up. I grew up with Al in. Uh, in uh, in the Bronx. Oh, so you guys knew each other growing up? Yeah, we played stickball together and and baseball. And I mean, we lived one block away from each other, so I, I'd see him quite often. And um, I saw him do his first play in junior high school, and he was it was called Home Sweet Homicide, and he was he was he was wonderful in that, and. Uh, and then later on, he, after high school, he got into, uh, I think it was either performing arts or Juilliard. And, you know, he, he developed himself uh, as a real artist. But it, it was something that he had uh, as a young, as a teenager, he was, he was very, very talented. I was, I was a singer at that time. I was, I was 15 years old in the Bronx. And, um, I was singing on the street corners, uh, doo-wop doo singing, and I was the lead singer. And um, this um, this manager heard our group and asked if if we would cut a demo record. We cut a demo, and and uh, next thing I knew, I was recording for uh, for MGM Records, uh, Cub wow. Label. Um, it's uh, it was a single called. Vanishing Angel, and the other side is called Kingdom of Love, by the Preludes. You could probably, you can, you could pull it up right now on YouTube, and uh, you can play it. Um, so it's the Preludes, Vanishing Angel, and Kingdom of Love, and uh, that's that's how I started in show business. I was about fifteen years old, and I started as a uh, as a singer. Yeah, and you. It's, it sounds like you, know, you, you still got the voice. Are you still recording anything or have you done anything uh, recently? I, I do sing from time to time. Um, in films, I, I've, I've uh, been known to sing a song or two. And, and you mentioned that uh, you, know, you grew up uh, you know, in the Bronx and you know, for me, a movie that comes to mind is uh, A Bronx Tale. Um, you know, with De Niro and uh, Chas Palminteri and, and Lilo Brancato. Right. Um, right. Uh, I, I imagine that you've you probably seen a Bronx Tale. Was that at all uh, kind of similar to what it was like growing up in the Bronx? Well, the, the funny thing is, you know, it was, um, was it out here? I think it was out here that Chaz was doing a, um, he was, he was doing a, a one-man show of uh, of of a Bronx a Bronx Tale. What was it? What's the name of it? A Bronx Tale, right? What is it? Yeah, Bronx. Yeah, the movie. 
and I took Al to the theater. We went to see the, uh, this is before De Niro was going to do it. <clears throat> and I took Al to, uh, we went, we went together to see uh, Chaz perform his one man show of a Bronx Tale. And I think Al had that, <laughs> that uh, chance to, uh, to see the play. But uh, as, as it turned out, um, De Niro did it. And uh, that's just a little footnote. But wow. yeah, um, yeah, I thought it was a wonderful, wonderful, um, you know, piece of work. And it was a wonderful film. Jazz was, was, was quite brilliant in it. And the writing was wonderful. So um, yeah, that's um, something that, uh, that was a part of history for me, yeah see how that was done. Yeah, because I know, um, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, when Chaz was looking to uh, get the movie made, you know, the, the one man show was getting a lot of uh, notice. And uh, um, from what I was reading and in interviews that I've seen, um, you know, the big production companies were just looking to, uh, to buy the rights, but they didn't want Chaz. And um, okay. yeah, and he and he wanted to, to play the part of Sonny. And um, it was De Niro who saw the one man show and said that, you know, if, if there's many people that can direct this movie, but if I do it, I'll do it right. Right. And, and that's kind of how the, uh, the partnership was created. Um, uh, that, that was, that was a movie that I also thought I was like, yeah, it'd be interesting to see Al Pacino uh, in it as well. Um, but it was cool to see uh, Joe Pesci. Um, and, and he had a oh, small part that was great. Yeah. on there. He's a such a great actor, such a great personality, you know, and he brings, he brings that, you know, um, to all his, his, his roles. He's so, you know, improvisational. So, um, he's one, he's really, uh, he's really, he's really interesting and, and interesting to watch. Um, was it, was it, I mean, knowing or, uh, you know, being that you grew up with, uh, with Al and obviously at a young age, you can tell that, you know, he had the talent and then, uh, was it weird kind of seeing him in, uh, in the Godfather at a, at a young age? I mean, he was probably in his late twenties. Were you surprised to see him do so well in the Godfather? Cause originally they didn't want him for that part. Yeah, actually, I think, uh, I think Jimmy wanted to play that part, Jimmy Kahn. But Coppola, I think, fought for um, uh, for Al. I don't know why, but it worked out. It certainly worked out. Al was wonderful in that role. Um, so back to your question. Um, as I said earlier, I mean, Al is a street kid from, from the Southeast Bronx and just with, with, with enormous talent. And... Um, I think that's what carries any artist through is 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 your is your talent and your and your uh discipline your dedication actually you know the work you put into it and he certainly put a lot of work into it i mean he's worked with you know with some wonderful wonderful coaches and teachers and so he studied and and he always did a play i mean i remember so he was doing plays um he was always doing a play as long as I knew him, he was getting up and doing, doing some, some theater. And I think that's, that makes a difference in, in an actor when, you know, when you do a lot of theater, it, it, it builds your confidence and it gives you, um, you know, it gives you a, a foundation to build on. There's some great actors that don't do much theater, you know, and, and still have uh, great, uh, they're great personalities. Uh, I, I say that word because Burt Lancaster once said to me, he said, Robert, it's a personality business. And it is, you know, you're bringing your personality to that moment. Uh, you're bringing your, your experience and your, your, who you are in, in the moment. And that's, I think, what resonates um, on screen. That's yeah. what the camera is recording. Yeah, like a lot of times when I listen, uh, you know, in on, you know, interviews, I know uh, 
Leif Schreiber, who's in Ray Donovan, and, and also interviews with, with Alan. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, when they get asked questions, kind of like, what, what do you want to do as an upcoming project? And a lot of actors say they want to get back into theater. And for a lot of them, that was the original uh, stomping ground. So um, I, do, do you feel like sometimes it's, um, you have more of a passion to, to do theater work versus uh, major motion pictures? Or do you, have a, do you have a preference over the other? Well, uh, you know, I, I think they're both exciting, uh, you know, in their own uh, theater has, is, is, you know, you only get one chance, you know, when you're up there, yeah. you know, there's no, there's no safety net. So it's quite exciting to do theater, uh, do something live. And, you know, I, I was all, I was always a performer. And so I was all, when I was a singer, you know, a pop singer, I was always in front of a, a live audience. Yeah. And it's something that I felt, I felt uh, at home at as a singer. And then as an actor, I had to, I had to learn uh, how to use myself in a different way. Because as, as a singer, you're performing. Yeah. And as an actor, it's, it's not so much a performance as it is an experience, as it is um, something, it's almost like, uh, it's a Zen experience in a way. If I said to you, you're doing nothing well, you know, um, it's, um, it's getting yourself out of the way and, and allowing this instrument to, to, uh, to work in the, in the, with the creative process, where as a, as a performer, you're actually in there, you know, performing it. Yeah. So there's just that, there's a shift, there's a, there's, a, um, there's a difference. And so I had to learn how to make that adjustment. Yeah. Are, are you given um, theater versus, you know, shooting, uh, you know, a movie, are you given any more artistic freedom or is it just, up to the director's uh, discretion usually. Have you, have you seen a, a, a preference one way or the other with the artistic freedom that an actor has theater versus uh, shooting a movie? It depends, you know, it depends on the, uh, on the director. Um, uh, some, some directors are, uh, want to micromanage you and, and that, that's, uh, that can be a problem because I think it stifles the, the creative process. Um, you know, I, I like to leave myself alone. I like to discover it, you know, as I do it and, and, and work from the given circumstances and let that, let that feed me. Um, and there are directors that have a certain vision of how they, how they see the character, how they, and they're, they're coming from, from a result. You know, they see the result and uh, the idea. And as an artist, if you're coming from the result or, the, uh, uh, or an idea of it, it stifles the creative process. So a good director will, will allow you to discover it organically as to impose something on you know on you to to go for a result which again uh, stops the process does that make sense no absolutely and you know i as as uh, do you have any and, and i don't mean to to put you on the spot but um, just from your experience with you know the, the movies that you've done and you have almost 300 uh you know credits to to your name pro, um, films and tv series that you've done so i mean you definitely would be the right person to ask um, well, actually, two two part question. One was there a director that you worked with um, for your time that you felt like gave you that artistic freedom? Uh, and then two um, was there a uh, do you think movies today compared to like movies from like the seventies, the eighties? Um, do you, do you feel like they they still have that spirit? Like when I when I think of you know movies like uh, like Deer Hunter, you know Taxi Driver, The Godfather. Um, just movies today just don't have that same type of uh, spirit. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, cinematography involved and CGI and 
you know, some of the best movies only had like a million dollar budget or less. Um, so yeah, sorry, two, two part question there, but um, maybe we'll just start with some directors that you felt like gave you the artistic freedom. So to answer your first question, uh, we'll go back to Donnie Brasco because it was such a great film. And uh, Mike Newell w was the director of, of Donnie Brasco. And I remember, I think it was the first day that I was working and there was, it was Al and Johnny Depp and Bruno Kirby and, uh, um, you know, Michael Madsen. Anyway, Rick. we're there uh, and we're in New York and we're on the street of New York. And, and it was cold, cold day, you know. And this was the scene where Sonny Red comes in. Anyway, so after I did a take, Mike Newell would come up to me and he'd whisper in my ear and he'd say, Robert, now do it for the first time. Do it for the first time. So that, to me, that, you know, it says it all, the, you know, the audience, the camera only wants to see it for the first time. And then it's, then it's alive, it's spontaneous. So, you know, it's, so it's, it's the actor that's able to, to um, work moment to moment and, and not know, not know where he's going. It's, it's going on that boat in, in uncharted waters and, and see where it takes you. And then it's for the first time. And then it's a surprise for the audience and for the actor, for the artist. Now, the, uh, the other, part question, other part of the question was, um, what was the, yeah. the other part? Yeah. yeah, as far as, um, you know, movies today compared to concept. movies of the past. Well, yeah. concept, big concept films, you know, it's all, um, like you say, CGI and special effects. And, um, uh, and I think we lose that, the, the story, you know, the story is so important. Um, I was watching, I've been mean, binging on this show uh, called The Affair. And, you know, uh, it's such a wonderful, wonderful show. The writing is so good. The, all the actors are such great players. Uh, and, and at the heart of it, it's the writing. It's the story that uh, you know in the stories um of of days gone by seem seem to have more uh, humanity uh, more soul. deer hunt you know but you can go on and on yes i agree with you that today this the films are are are, are more about uh, uh brands yeah. than uh, the artistic uh, endeavor yeah. And you mentioned uh, Donnie Brasco um, yeah. and, and, you know, the Donnie Brasco movie, you know, was based on, uh, you know, Joe Pistone um, character with the alias, you know, Donnie Brasco. Um, did you, I, I know there was a book that was written before the movie actually came out. Um, did you right. all know um, the story of uh, Donnie Brasco before the book came out or before you joined? I read the, I read the book, unfortunately, I forget. I, I should know that. The writer, of, I forget who the, who the writer is, but it was a great book. And I, you know, I met Joe Pistone on the set, you know, and uh, he was quite an interesting guy. Um, you know, I asked him, I said, Joe, I said, tell me something, what was the most, what was the most difficult thing about, about your, you know, your, 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 uh, your experience, you know, your, your your role in doing doing this in life, and he said, "Well, you know, he's a college, college graduate. He was a very he was an ed educated guy." And he said, "Well, the hardest part was hanging out with these guys because um, all they talked about was their their cars and their you know and gambling." And so to him, it wasn't stimulating. But yet, you know, he was uh, he did what he had to do, and you know, um, anyway, it was a great great film. Yeah. You know, yeah, and and you were so good uh, in it, you know, as as Sunny Red, um, you know, and it was it was great because you know in that movie, you know, it, it felt like you know I mean you had Johnny Depp, you had Al Pacino, um, 
and for your role, I mean, you were essentially uh, an underboss. I mean, so you were superior to um, to wow. uh, to Al Pacino's role. And um, so, like, it was very intimidating, you know, when you came in that first scene. And, and you were mentioning that, you know, like when the director was saying, you know, the first time uh, when you first came in and, you know, you're seeing him. And, you know, after you walked away when he's like, I think I just shit my pants. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and, and it was it was so intimidating. Um, and you kind of cemented, you know, who you were right then and there, you know, in just that 10 seconds. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's funny how I got, you know, how I got the role. I, I, if I can just compress this story, I, you know, I, I was here in, in Los Angeles and I had reconnected with Al out here in uh, Santa Monica and we started playing paddle, paddle tennis. You know, it was like a small tennis pool. And uh, we were, you know, we were playing and he went back to New York and they were casting Donnie Brasco. And um, I called my agent, my agent called the casting people and they said there was nothing in the, in the film for me. I called New York and uh, I got Al's, Al's guy on the phone who, who travels with Al. And I said, I said, listen, I said, you know, they're casting Donnie Brasco and I can't, you know, they, my agent said they won't, they won't see me. And he said, Robert, he said, Robert, he said, I'm making Al's list right now as we speak. I'll put your name down. Wow. So the next, yeah, the next day I get a call from the casting, casting office saying they want me to come to Sony, Sony Studios, pick up a script, and I'm going to meet with Mike Newell. Okay, so cut to the chase. I'm in the room with Mike Newell, two other actors, and we read, and we finish the reading, and then Mike Newell stands up, and he says, well, thank you all for coming. And he reaches over to me with his left hand. And I felt that was kind of strange, you know, because where we come from, somebody gives you his left hand. It's, it's, it's almost insulting. And I, for some reason, I, it got me a little... I, I got hot a little bit, you know? My ears got a little hot. So I walked outside, took a breath, you know, and blah, blah. I came back inside and he's still with his left hand thanking the guys. We're in New York and, I, and we're shooting the film. And I say, Mike, tell me something. You saw all these people, I mean, for that role. Why did you give me that role? Why did I get that role? And he said, Robert, it was your cruel eye. So maybe, you know, when he gave me the left hand, I gave him a look and he saw that look and he said, that's the look I'm looking for. And I, so who knows, you know, you know, but that's, that's an interesting, I, I thought that was an interesting, uh, that was something else, something, something interesting for me. Are, are you able to share um, maybe who was, who else was up for the role or I understand that if you can't, but I'd be, are you able to share kind of who else was up for the role? You know, I'm sure a lot of people were. I can't, I don't know for sure, you know, who else was up, but I know a lot of people were, were up for the role. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. It was, uh, uh, you know, it was, it was quite an experience to be there in New York and, and working with Al. I mean, that's, uh, it was, it was, it was kind of a hoot. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was exciting. Yeah. I know the uh, the Bruno Kirby role um, that originally they were looking at Joe Pesci to potentially play that role, and I don't know if there was any truth to that. Okay. I'm up on that, but uh, they were thinking of Joe Pesci know. for that role. But I, I love Joe Pesci; I think he's one of my favorite uh, actors. Uh, but Bruno did such a good job uh, in that role as well. Yeah, he was he, he was awesome, and um, he did I mean, job. Michael did a great job too. I think. Uh, I think uh, who else was up for that role for Sonny Black? I think uh, oh it's, it's God why why anyway there were other actors a lot of other actors that were up for for Sonny Black but they gave it they gave it to Michael. Awesome. Um, I, I do want to jump into uh, Fast and Furious and yeah. uh, and you know that that was a uh, you know a huge movie and as, as I mentioned earlier you know that was the the Fast and Furious movie that kind of kickstarted the franchise back because they made 
uh, the original, uh, you know, the Fast and Furious, and then they did Too Fast, Too Furious, and then they went to Tokyo, and it was kind of set before, or I'm sorry, it was uh, set after the uh, the movies that came after um, the in the franchise. So like Fast and Furious kind of re kickstarted the engine, brought Vin Diesel back, and uh, yeah. you know this this whole this whole movie, you know, we we're hearing this uh, this villain named Braga. You know what I mean? And you know. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and just, you know, the story, you know, goes and um, kind of what was that experience like? And, uh, you know, what did you think of, uh, of that production? Well, it was, a, it was a pretty big production. It was a huge production. Um, and, um, you know, I, it was, it was a, 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 again, exciting to, to be on the set with, uh, with, D, with Vin Diesel and, um, you know the other actors in that movie. I mean, it was just, just wonderful. Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, you know, I enjoyed doing the role, and uh, I was happy to be part of that. Awesome. And um, as far as some of your uh, your upcoming projects, I know there's a, you have a ton of movies that are scheduled to be released. Um, later this year, came out this year as well and next year. Do you mind sharing uh, some of the projects that, um, that we should be There's one out now called Exorcism uh, at 60,000 Feet with, uh, I think, Bai Ling is in it and Matthew Moy. Uh, there's a few, you know, a few other wonderful actors, Adrian Barbeau, directed by uh, um, Chad Ferrin. My wife is in it, Sylvia Spross. Um, so yeah, that was fun. That was uh, Robert Ryan produced it and wrote it. Yeah, it was great. That was great fun. Great fun. It's a comedy. That you know, that's out now. There's another one that's coming out called Bab, B A B. It's kind of a thriller, sci-fi thriller. Um, Overrun. That's another one that's coming out. Uh, and we just finished doing. I just finished producing one called the called the Deep Ones, and I did that with with Chad Ferrin as well. Uh, it's a based on H.P. Lovecraft's. Um, the deep ones. Um, so that's that's. Uh, we're actually we're actually uh, in negotiation right now with the, with the distributor to, uh, to to you know to sell the film. Um, yeah, so that's exciting, and yes. we'll probably do a sequel sequel to that. So we got three or four different films coming out. Awesome. And, um, or, and I know just from, you know, speaking with, uh, you know, some of the actors that, you know, it's it, Hollywood's kind of starting to slowly kind of pick back up and there's, there's different yeah. cities where I know Atlanta has kind of become the, uh, the new uh, Hollywood for right now. Um, you know, with California kind of still, you know, slowly reopening. Um, how, how's that uh, impacted you with kind of, uh, you know, things kind of being at a halt? Oh, the virus? Uh, well, I mean, just kind of how, how that's affected your your schedule, because I know a lot of, for a lot of folks it's been difficult to kind of. You know, get an actor, you know, an actor, you have, you know, as an actor, you have a lot of time, a time uh, to yourself, you know. Um, so, I spend a lot of time at home. Anyway, um, it's there's been there's been a lot fewer jobs. I uh, I'll say that. Uh, and fewer auditions, um, but you know, I I tend to take it one day at a time, and just you know go with the flow of it. And if this is you know this is what uh, is what's happening, uh, you know, I, I go with it. You know, and I think that it's it's fine. It's okay. What's you know what's not okay are just all the people that have gotten sick. You know, that's you know that's unfortunate, really unfortunate, and uh, so it's def definitely affected the business, and and I think it it's affected you know everyone's life in in, in a way, and um, I I don't know if we're ever going to get back to, I don't think there's any there's getting any getting back to anything, we're just moving ahead, and I think life is going to be different. Uh, because of this, uh, you know, because of the virus, and 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 we'll get through it, as we have before, 
and we'll learn from it and grow from it. Um, I hope we grow wiser. You know, the, the world, there's so much going on in the world today. Um, and we have to really be conscious of, 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 uh, of, of what's going on. Uh, how to, you know, how to, to heal, heal ourselves and the planet. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful planet. And uh, let's take care of it. Have, have you picked up uh, any new hobbies uh, during this time? Are there any new skills? I, you play chess. You know, I, I play chess. I'm a chess player. And I'm a, I'm a pool player as well. I like to play pool. So I, I got, got back into playing pool. Uh, I play chess online with the computer, but I don't do very well. <laughs> uh, but pool, I started, uh, I started playing pool when I was very young. And I, you know, I can play a fair game of pool. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I'd, I'd love to, uh, you know, play some online chess with you sometime. Uh, I, I think I'd be afraid to play you in pool. I feel like you might, you might hustle me on the tables. But online chess, I might stand a chance. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Next time, anytime. I'm, well, I'm, I'm le we're going out of town tomorrow, but I'll be back in, in a week or so. And Let's uh, let's play. Excellent. No, we'll, we'll definitely connect. And and Robert, I want to be respectful of your time. I know we uh, got started a little bit late today, and uh, I want to want to give you back uh, some okay. time. I, I can't begin to say how honored I am to uh, to have you on. Um, you know, I, I'd love to do this uh, again with you sometime. And just thank you for the sure. uh, the, the knowledge and um, you know sharing with us your experience and just discussing some more behind the scenes, behind, behind some of these legendary movies, and also, you know, your, your experience, you know, you know six plus decades of, uh, of experience. So I just, it's a big honor to, to have you on today, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a, it's been a pleasure uh, chatting with you, and I wish you all the best, and uh, um, we'll do it again. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and have a good night. Yeah. Peace, Pat. Take care. Thank you.